Hello and welcome to A-Level Economics at Butterswood School. I'm so sorry we can't do this face to face, but we really look forward to welcoming you here in September. My name is Mr. Bloxham. I'm the Head of Business Studies and Economics. Uh, my colleagues are Mr. Langman and Mrs. Crowley. Now, Mr. Langman is our economics expert and he is the one who's going to be leading you from September. He has a wealth of experience in industry as an economics reporter for Bloomberg, as well as now proving himself as an excellent teacher. You are in great hands with Mr. Langman. Let me introduce you to the course and we'll have a look at what the course entails, perhaps what sort of lessons look like and uh, get a feel for economics. So economics, uh, an element of economics is studying human behaviour. Um, we look at how markets work and how they fail. And what we do when we look at that is we divide it into two sections. We look at micro and macro. Now micro is looking at how the economics, how money, how um, goods are exchanged within a particular industry. Whereas on a macro level, we're looking at it between countries on a much bigger scale. So economics, in a nutshell is between micro and macro. We're looking at, at money, markets, goods, how things are moved between micro level at an industry and at a macro level where countries trade with one another. What do you need to study economics? Well, I'm sure you've already got the prerequisites to be joining us. What is it you need about yourself? What sort of characteristics? Well, you need a desire to understand how the world works. There is an element of business and finance that comes through in economics, but we're looking at it more on a much larger scale. Whereas A-level business looks at how functional areas and how businesses actually operate, economics, we're looking at how the world operates. How does the economy actually run? And there's so much relevant examples out in the world today when we look at the COVID pandemic and how businesses are being supported by the government, how cash is being injected into our economy. But clearly that's got to come from somewhere. And what is the trade? off because there's only a finite amount of resources. One of the key things to remember with economics is that there is only a limited resources. So we must make decisions on what we do with that money. How do countries and how do industries use money and resources effectively because they cannot do everything that they want. If it's used in one area then it's likely to impact negatively in another area. We need to look at these trade-offs and how they influence one another. It's really helpful to enjoy presenting arguments. Economics isn't black and white. We don't have the answers to everything as a foregone conclusion. We need to decide in advance or make predictions based on arguments. We need to consider what we think is the right thing to do. Boris Johnson has made some right decisions and he's made some mistakes since the COVID um, pandemic. We could look at it from a financial standpoint and an economic standpoint and think, why? Why did these mistakes happen and what made them make that decision in the first place? And it's all about presenting your arguments and thinking about what the motives are, what are you trying to achieve by this decision? And you need to enjoy analysing data. There is a significant amount of data that's presented to you and some of the diagrams can be quite challenging. So don't underestimate the need for analytical uh, skills and for a desire to look at numbers and maths and diagrams because there is a significant amount of that in this course. And I'm sure you've already got the prerequisites to join us or will have. That won't be a concern. So how are you assessed? Well, it's three papers, 100 marks in each paper. Paper one looks at themes one and three. Now we look at the themes across the year, themes one and two in year one, themes three and four in year two. One and th three focus on micro. Don't forget micro is looking at how, um, and how the economy within industries operates. Whereas paper two looks at macro, how countries operate and trade with one another. And then paper three brings it all together. Each paper is worth the same. It's all a third of your final A level and they all appear at the end of these two years. You will be assessed throughout your time. Uh, in year 12, we're going to have some formal mock exams. We'll have lots of uh, end of unit assessments. There'll be lots of little assessments in class. So we'll make sure that we know where you are and how we can help you. Um, it's really important that we have this in a two way relationship where we give you knowledge, you work on that, we then assess it and we look at the gaps in that knowledge or perhaps any misunderstanding. So don't be put off by regular um, assessments. They really do help inform us of how we need to help you. 
Uh, again, so these are your final papers in year 13. They're taken any time between April and June of uh, 2022. Um, we won't know the dates yet, but they will be published closer to the time and we'll know when we get them. What does a lesson look like? Okay, so a very simple, straightforward lesson objective that you could be faced with would be learn an objective one, draw a perfect competition diagram in the short run, long run and loss making. Now clearly that's not going to mean anything to you at this stage, but to give you an idea of some of the diagrams we're talking about, this is what one of these diagrams may look like. Okay, so you must find yourself comfortable with looking at data, assessing data within diagrams, interpreting what that means, how that diagram might change, is this line going to shift if we make any changes to the data that's being represented. So there's a loss of analysis of diagrams, drawing diagrams and referring to them in extended writing. So you must be comfortable and happy to look at data and to look at how it's presented. In many lessons, we'll bring in some contextual examples. We'll look at what's going on in industry, what's going on in the world. Are giant digital companies perhaps abusing their monopoly power? And what does that mean? What is the impact of them by doing that? Why are they allowed to do that? Why are they almost encouraged in some areas to do that? And it's about getting into that detail. We could be looking at what future for cinemas in a world dominated by Netflix and Amazon. How does that industry be impacted by a big shift in what consumer behavior? Don't forget, we're looking at how consumers behave and how that impacts the economies within industries and on a macro scale between countries. We will look at some significant events. Now, clearly Brexit was something we imagined was going to be very key to next year's teaching. But since then, something significant has happened. We've had the economic shock of the pandemic of COVID-19. It still is in, in ongoing. It hasn't been resolved yet. But this is going to have a significant impact on the economy and, and the economies around the world and on industries. And it's going to give us a great deal of information and contextual understanding to appreciate what is actually going on from an economic standpoint with this pandemic, with this shock to our economy. Should the UK rail industry be nationalised? What are we going to argue for here? What are we looking to achieve? Sugar tax, is it an effective way to tackle the social costs of obesity? So there's a range of things that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be applying and drawing on contextual relevant information that's out there in the world around us. We're also going to look at the short and long term consequences of developments in technology like artificial intelligence. How is that going to impact industries? How is that going to impact countries? How are they going to adopt this uh, technology and use it to their advantage? Or perhaps why might it be a threat to certain economies? But these are big questions that we can look at from an economic standpoint. And it will really help to understand exactly what the future holds for us from an economic point of view. So that's a very, very brief introduction to economics. But referring back to my first slide, you'll find my contact details on there. Also, Mr. Langman's contact details. I recommend you reaching out to him directly if you've got any particular questions about the course coming up in September. He is likely to be leading most of your lessons from September. Uh, I'm sure he would welcome any contact from you with any queries to the summer work, perhaps, that we've asked you to complete. And we really, really look forward to welcoming you onto the course. See you in September.